The original Final Fantasy is considered a landmark moment for Japanese role-playing games. Its sequel isn't. FF2 is probably one of my least favorites uh, because it felt like they really wanted to try something new, but they did not try and polish it. It felt rushed. It felt like they didn't know what they were doing half the time. The short development time feels very apparent, and many of the game's ideas fail due to sloppy programming. 2 is a bold experiment gone wrong. Rather than embrace a standard RPG experience point system, the team decided to base progression on how often a character performed a certain activity. Final Fantasy II is a failed experiment that attempted to transform the leveling system of the first game. Having to attack your own party members to raise their strength and HP early on is unbelievably dull. Final Fantasy II had the potential to be a great game, but was bogged down heavily by the leveling system. You can't be a competent force in the game unless you grind. Nothing is convenient unless you grind. And what a grind it truly is. It sucks. It sucks so bad. So, people really hate Final Fantasy 2. Because of the surprising success of the first Final Fantasy, it wasn't long before Square started production for the next title of the series. While other companies would expand on the mechanics of the first title, Square decided to go in a completely different direction with the next title in their series. The game was released a year after the first game in Japan, but we would have to wait over a decade to see just how different the game was from the rest of the series. When we finally did get it, we discovered that it had a new keyword mechanic, as well as a completely new leveling system. This system made it so the more you used a certain action, the stronger it became. The more you attacked, the higher your strength was. The more you used a certain weapon, the better you'd become with that weapon. The more hits you'd take in battle, the higher your HP would become. It was an interesting and unique new leveling system. And people freaking hated it. Back in the heyday of YouTube, and also when I was much younger, I would see these top 10 lists everywhere. Top 10 video game protagonists, top 10 Nintendo games, and so on. I was a fan of Final Fantasy, so when I happened to stumble upon a top 10 worst Final Fantasy games list, my curiosity got the better of me. Though the list was full of spin-off titles, to my surprise there was a mainline entry on the list, and lo and behold it was Final Fantasy 2. I had the Game Boy Advance version, so it surprised me that the commentator had so many bad things to say about it. In fact, a lot of people had a bunch of negative things to say about it when I looked up more reviews of the game. I had tried to play the game many times before, but never really got past the first 20 to 30 minutes. These reviews of the game made me think, oh, that's why I could never get into this game, and I moved on. Fast forward two or three years and I had once again beaten the first Final Fantasy on Game Boy Advance and Final Fantasy No. 2 was staring right at me. I had played almost every Final Fantasy game over those years, and decided that if I was a true Final Fantasy fan, that I had to play the game and at least get a few hours in so that I could say that I've played it. So, I started it up and played it again. Two days passed by and I had already beaten it and I really, really liked it. For me, there aren't a lot of games that can capture my attention for longer than 30 to 40 minutes, but once in a blue moon there comes a game that I become so enamored with that I can't put it down until I finish it. Final Fantasy II is one of these games. I thought that the hate for the game had died down since I hadn't heard any bad things about it at the time, and I thought that perhaps people had warmed up to it. But as it turns out, it's kind of disheartening that I can barely find anybody that can say anything nice about the game. Was I the only one that liked it? I see a few people defending it in the comments and some reviews highlighting the game's strengths, but these small few are the only ones I could find that stood up for the game. Since there are so little positive reviews out there, I decided that it's long due that this game got some recognition and to add on to the small pile of positive reviews. The purpose of this video isn't to try and persuade you into liking Final Fantasy 2 or even to think that it's a good game. What I want to do is not only defend and argue in favor of it, but to try and explain how and why someone could like it. Final Fantasy 2 isn't my favorite game by any means, but it's a game that I had a lot of fun with. A game that I couldn't put down until I finished it. This video is also largely based off of the Game Boy Advance remake since it's the only copy that I own. I'm aware that there are some improvements from the PlayStation version onward, so there might be some things that I don't have problems with that may have been larger issues in the original version. With that said, let's get started. Final Fantasy 
Final Fantasy II was a much different game than its predecessor and the games that came after it. They implemented a keyword system where you could learn various words that NPCs would say, which you could then ask certain other NPCs about, to which they would either give you more information on and progress the story, or give you a single question mark. You'll learn a lot of words throughout your adventure. It's a unique system that hasn't really been revisited, probably because everyone hated it. The keyword system is honestly not that bad. There are certain people that are clearly more important to talk to than others, especially since the option to say certain words don't show up unless it's an important NPC. And it's not like it takes a long time to find the right word either. If you choose the wrong word, it's not like it sends you into a cutscene with full dialogue. It's just one box, one question mark. Well, okay then, let's move on. I never spent more than even 10 seconds trying to see if I had a word that worked with someone or not. But just to prove my point, Here's me at the very end of the game, just before the last dungeon, trying every single word I've learned throughout my journey with the princess. Every single word combined took a little over 20 seconds. It doesn't take that long. It definitely adds up over time if you try every single word with every single NPC, which I doubt much of anyone did on their playthrough of the game. At least, I hope they didn't. If I didn't have the correct word within the first few options, then I know I missed something and needed to backtrack, which never took that long either. And obviously, if the first few words didn't work, a word from six hours ago probably won't work either. Why would I want to waste my time trying every single word with every single person? You can't even use it with every person. There are only a few NPCs that you can use the system with. Why would a word we learned at the very beginning of the game be used now of all times? It's true that we learn a bunch of words throughout the course of the game, but why would I think that Wild Rose would be used in the game again when it served its purpose? You could make the argument that the game should have discarded the words when you're done using them, and I suppose that would have saved me all of 45 seconds in the long run, but we're honestly making a bigger deal about this mechanic than it needs to be. With the reviews I've seen, people seem to think this is a major flaw in the game when it barely gets in the way. If anything, it made me pay attention more to what was happening in the story, but more importantly, where I was supposed to go next. If I was missing a certain keyword, the princess was probably holding it, and I just hadn't gotten to her yet. Chances were, though, that the word that I learned most recently was the word that I needed to use. Shocking, right? Once you've asked the few people that you can about a word enough to progress the story, you can probably assume that it won't be used again. With a few exceptions, of course, which got me lost at some points, to be fair. It's not really an engaging system, but it doesn't get in the way. Like I mentioned earlier, I barely spent 10 seconds when I had the option to do it because the most recent word I learned was most likely the one I was supposed to use. I never once thought I'd better check every word with every person just in case. When you choose the right word, the game is pretty clear what your next objective is, so you don't have to wonder if there are any others you need to use the word with at that time. You might need to later, but probably at the next location where the game had directed you. It's how the story progresses in most cases. If there's no clear direction on where to go and the NPCs of the town are giving you no clues, it's probably a good idea to go back and talk to the princess. There are probably new words you have to learn there. To be completely honest, Final Fantasy II gave me the least amount of trouble when it came to where I was supposed to go and what I needed to do compared to other RPGs. The game is actually pretty generous in that regard. If after a cutscene I wasn't sure where to go, the next location wasn't clear, or I simply just spaced some dialogue, there was always an NPC nearby that would give me the information I was looking for. This is pretty typical of RPGs to begin with. I would even say that the keyword system doesn't play that big of a role in the game anyway because of the short amount of time it takes to use it. It's one small mechanic in the game compared to the leveling system. Which leads me to the most controversial aspect of the game. The number one thing everyone complains about is the leveling system. To briefly go over what has already been said, instead of a traditional level up system, all your stats go up individually. Doing a certain command in the game gives that action experience. If you want anything in the game to be useful or powerful, you need to frequently use that action. This sounds like an interesting concept that could be really fun, but I wouldn't be here defending the game if that were the case. The leveling system is very divisive, and that's putting it lightly. Most people you talk to about the game will tell you that it's where the main problems lie. The leveling system is definitely different. I'm not accusing anyone of not liking it because of that fact alone, though I wouldn't doubt that would be the case for at least some people. I know that people have different tastes and have good reasons not to like it, but don't we generally like it when numbers go up? It's why Cookie Clicker was so popular. It feels good when we get a level up because we know that we're stronger because of it. As for the leveling system in Final Fantasy II, I don't think controversial is a good word to use here because of how universally hated it is. Go 
to any review and they'll tell you that it's a good idea on paper but not in practice. The problem for me is that I just don't understand where the hate is coming from. I've seen the videos arguing against it, but I still can't manage to understand the general line of thinking. I'm not saying that it isn't faulty because I'm clearly in the minority, but when I watch these reviews, it's like every point they bring up against the game just leads me to think that it's one of the reasons why I like the game. The leveling system is bad, you can manipulate it! Yeah, isn't it cool that you can customize your party in such a way as to fit your tastes? Don't people like customization? I still love the concept in the first Final Fantasy that I can choose four white mages if I want. I have the option if I so desire. People freaking love the Mass Effect games for having choice and multiple paths and endings. Heck, people like other Final Fantasy games that do this. Final Fantasy 3 and 5's job systems are highly customizable to do whatever you want, especially with how you can combine them, even if they don't make any sense. Same goes for the Bravely Default Fault series, games meant to capture the original feel of older Final Fantasy games. I'd argue that Final Fantasy 2 is just as customizable as these games. You can have these characters be whatever you want them to be. You can have Guy be the white mage if you want, but if you really wanted, you could also enhance other areas like black magic, offense, defense, agility, or a little of everything. The difference between Final Fantasy 2 and future Final Fantasy games is that instead of just picking from a menu what job you want, you have to decide in advance between a wide variety of stats, weapons, and magic spells that you want to level up. But this isn't what people mean when they say that you can manipulate the system. This leads me to... Ugh. The example everyone gives to illustrate why the leveling system is bad. A lot of people don't care for the system because it can be exploited very easily. The primary way to exploit the game is to get into battle with weak enemies and have your characters begin hitting themselves. Plus you can cheat the system by attacking yourself. Instead of being revolutionary, it led to ridiculous situations like attacking your own party members to increase their hit points. And you can break the game by like trying to level up your um, teammates because you can actually attack each other. But it's faster just to hit yourself with magic spells and physical attacks. It's the only way you can force your characters to grow. The actual best and recommended way to level up is by constantly hitting yourself. Attack yourself with weapons of magic, heal, and help your stats go up, because sometimes they don't. I mean, you can still attack yourselves in easy battles to spam magic and drain MP and raise your HP, but come on, it's still a long, tedious thing to sit through. So the only way to level up in this game is to hit yourself over and over again. You heard that right. Hitting yourself over and over again for hours on it. And if you thought to yourself, like, oh, that Why is this a bad thing? You mean to tell me that I can manipulate the game's leveling system by doing the things that make me level up in the game? Yes, this is another way you can level up your party. The developers probably left it in because it still makes sense within the world of Final Fantasy II. Perhaps an easter egg you can find when messing around with the mechanics of the game. It's just another option you have. Don't people like having options? They make it sound like it's the worst thing ever. Man, I can't beat this dungeon. Instead of grinding like in most RPGs, I'm gonna get into a battle and just have everyone kill each other. That'll show this game. Okay, if you want to do that, then that's fine, but like, you don't have to do it. I never felt the need to grind in this game in general, so I never felt compelled to do this in the first place. To my knowledge, it isn't any faster than just grinding normally. But for the sake of the video, I went ahead and did a few comparisons. I started a new game, and as soon as I could, I went outside and grinded for 35 minutes. I never attacked my party members, I just grinded. I bought some spells for a few of my characters so I could level those up as well. I wrote my stats down at the end of the 35 minutes, and then I started another game. This time, I had the intention of hurting my party members every single battle for 35 minutes. And oh my gosh, it was such a chore. Right after I started my first battle, Guy one-shot himself. So I had to go to the church to revive him and then go to the inn to recover everyone's HP. Then I remembered that you can't defend in the GBA version. Either that or I'm crazy and could never figure out how to do it. So when it got to the point where any action Guy would take would result in the death of a party member or the monster, what was he supposed to do? I did the flee action a few times since running away never seems to work in this game anyway, but I didn't want to risk actually running away, so I ended up buying useless antidotes so my party could use it on themselves when they couldn't do anything in battle anymore. And even then, I would crit and kill myself anyway and have to go back to the church and inn again. I went to the church 5 times to revive a party member. I went back to the inn 11 times. I wanted to buy potions to not waste any more time, but I never had any money because I had to go to the inn so often and had 
to buy those useless antidotes to waste a turn if I needed to. I managed to buy Cure early on, but it leveled up so quickly that I could only cast it so many times before I had to go back to the inn. I also wasn't able to buy any black magic spells. After completing that, I compared the stats of the two. The most significant difference between the two was stamina, which affects HP growth, evasion, and magic defense. The party where I hurt myself had almost triple the stamina over the party that I grinded normally, and you can tell by looking at the HP differences. The evasion and the magic defense are also slightly higher. Other than that, the only thing that was higher was the weapon and shield levels, the self-harm group having a two-level advantage over the other. The other team, on the other hand, had higher strength, intelligence, and agility over the other team, by a few points, mind you. I did the same experiment a few more times, but at various other points in the game, and I got similar results, though the weapon and shield differences switched parties. I tried to play it like I normally would while playing the game, attacking and casting spells instead of just attacking. If we take all the stats into account, if you want to grind for damage, you'll want to grind normally, and if you want to take more hits, you'll want to attack your own party since your stamina will skyrocket. Well, there you go guys, you get a buttload of HP by beating yourself up. There are obvious benefits by attacking yourself in the game, but oh my gosh, it was so frustrating. Why do I get the feeling that we're doing this to ourselves? We're cheating the system to get stronger, but as a result, our experience with the game is diminished. Getting hurt, dying, getting game overs, it doesn't feel good, but we're literally the ones doing it. You are not forced to do it, and you don't need to do it. Don't fool yourselves. This just wastes time, guys. Really. With my first grinding experiment, you can just do it while playing the actual story of the game, making actual progress and moving forward. You can't do that with attacking your party because the enemies will just kill you. You need to have the inn nearby to heal yourself or buy a ton of potions. It's an exploit that can raise your stamina faster, but you'll barely see an increase in damage if my 35 minute grinding sessions have anything to say about it. Actually, while I'm on the topic, you won't see much of an increase for any of your other stats for that matter. People keep saying that if you do this at the beginning, beginning of the game that you'll become godlike and the game will become too easy. What they really mean is that you'll be able to take more damage. Are we really so poor at planning ahead and strategizing in battle that we can't handle stronger enemies? If you really want to be absolutely brain dead while playing this game and eliminate any kind of strategy or critical thinking you could possibly have, then go right ahead and attack yourself. Enjoy your freaking playthrough. You'll obviously see these other stats increase over a long period of time, but that's what I'm trying to get at here. A long period of time. There's YouTube videos illustrating the faster and easier way of using this exploit at least. You have a character you swap, end the battle, go to an inn, and repeat the cycle. Gee, I wonder how long that took. Doing this is just a chore and it makes the game a chore. I mean, again, if you think it's super fun, then go ahead, more power to you. Like I said, it's another option in the game. If you enjoy it, then that's fine. But people make it seem like this is the be all end all of the game. But just to make sure if attacking your party members really is the best way to play the game, I started looking into speedruns. You'd think a speedrun of all things would use this dastardly exploit of attacking your party members to their advantage to beat the game faster. Yep, that's... that's how they do it. They spent maybe a total of 15 minutes outside the story for grinding, and this is how they grinded. It's still exploiting the game, but instead of attacking their party members, they do... a little shield dance. This raises stats like evasion and agility to make it easier to run away from battle. They ran away a lot, and when they couldn't run away, they teleported the enemy away. Which works on pretty much every enemy in the game. Including the Emperor. They, uh... They beat the final boss with everyone having less than 300 HP. Watching this, it actually doesn't look any harder than attacking your party members. I guess you can do a lot more things in the game than I thought. So, uh, yes. You can exploit the game to beat it faster, like any speedrun, but not any that people would have any knowledge of when they first played the game. Or like, any of us would have knowledge of. Has anyone ever talked about this? Because this is like the first time I've ever seen them. Yes, you can manipulate the game, but that's the point. 
you have control over what happens to your party. If it really bothers you that much that you even have the option to exploit the game, then I guess you don't have to play it, but I think it's kinda silly to list it as a criticism for the game. It's like criticizing the enhanced port of Final Fantasy IX for having the option to use cheats. If you're struggling with a boss, then you have the option to have all of your characters be level 99, among the other cheats that it has. Yeah, you have the option, but you don't have to do it. Final Fantasy 2 isn't even this extreme. I gave an over-exaggerated example to get my point across. All these arguments against the game I keep hearing are, you can do this, or you could do that. Is the temptation to do it alone enough to warrant criticism? The exploits you can do in this game take just as much time as grinding anything else. So why are we so stuck on this example? In my personal opinion, simply having the option to do something shouldn't be counted as criticism. I can't tell if people are stating this as a fault of the game because of the fact that you can do it or because they were frustrated that they felt like they had to grind, like in every RPG ever. Personally, I never felt that I was grinding in this game. I just went about battles like in other RPGs. Granted, I fought more battles than I usually would have because I actually enjoyed the leveling system and because the encounter rate is super high. Instead of running away like I normally would have, I enjoyed seeing my constant improvement after every battle, and that's not an exaggeration. Almost. It bombards you with higher stats after almost every battle, even if it's a small thing. I never had to attack my party members. I just went about playing the game normally, attacking and casting spells, and like in any other RPG, I was fine. You should be able to level up naturally throughout your playthrough of the game. If you're focusing on someone being a mage, then you're obviously going to use spells more often. People make it sound like it's a big deal that you have to cast spells repeatedly to level them up when you'll be doing that naturally throughout the course of the game anyway. Unless you like to use magic spells only on bosses or something, I guess. Granted, in my playthrough, the highest any spell got in the game was Ultima, which hit level 10. And to be fair, I did technically grind it out, but I never went out of my way to do it. I used it more than normal throughout my path because it has a heavy story emphasis in the game. It's the most powerful spell, or at least the game says so. To my dismay, it's about as powerful as any other spell in the game, which kinda sucks. Most of my spells stayed at level 8 or 9 with the frequency I used them at. Late game I didn't really focus on leveling up magic spells, admittedly, except for haste, because it's hilarious. One of the more common criticisms I saw in reviews were that you have to take damage in order to increase your HP. Like, yeah, it's an RPG, you'll get hit. Are you expecting to clear the game without getting hit once? I feel like I keep repeating myself, but in my playthrough I never exploited the system to get higher HP and I never grinded for it. Now, I would say that you can just cure during battle so both your HP and magic spell would grow, but upon research apparently curing in battle also means that your HP wouldn't increase because the game thinks that you left the battle untouched. Hey, I'm arguing that this is a decent game, not a perfect one, but if having your health restored in battle means that it doesn't count for your HP leveling up, that just means that it takes a lot longer longer to exploit the game by attacking your party members. If you feel like you absolutely must attack your party members in the game, then you have to go out of your way to do it because doing it in a dungeon or while following the story will just get you killed. The only improvements I saw grow more substantially than normal when I attacked my party members was HP and stamina. Going out of your way and doing this just takes longer for you to beat the game. Let's be real. By the time my party entered the final dungeon, the majority of my party averaged just under 2500 HP, which was enough for the final dungeon, providing a good challenge by not having too little health to be one-shot by enemies, but still being weary of my health nonetheless. This doesn't even include Leon, who I fought exactly three battles with before entering the final dungeon. The only stat that went up for him before entering was stamina. But because people feel the need to do more grinding in this game than is needed, you are either too weak or completely overpowered. There is no in-between. I think a statement like this is kind of over-exaggerated a little bit. I can only base anything off my playthrough of the game, and personally, I thought it was pretty balanced, with some messy difficulty spikes along the way. There was only really one or two times where I was to the point of a game over at the end of a dungeon. I had no way out after completing it because I didn't have any MP to use teleport and I was out of ethers. But through sheer willpower, I'm constantly saving and loading when everything got messy, I was able to escape the dungeon. <coughs> That was hard. During my playthrough of the game, I was able to handle any situation the game threw at me. There was never a time where a dungeon or a boss was so much for me to handle that I felt like I needed to go out of my way to make my character stronger. That's not to say that the game wasn't challenging, because it definitely was, but it was never to the point where it was unfair. I should probably mention at this point that I have a guilty pleasure for grinding. 
I guess I like seeing numbers go up or something. A while ago I played the original Dragon Warrior for the first time, a game notorious for grinding. I saw it at a local game store for relatively cheap, so I bought it. As I said earlier in the video, there aren't a lot of video games that can grab my attention and hold on to it. When I buy a new game, it's more common than not for me to play it for an hour or two before I lose interest. Dragon Warrior, however, was a pleasant surprise. I beat it in less than two weeks. But anyway, the point is is that I find grinding to be fun. Video's over guys, he likes grinding. That explains explains why he likes the game, move along. Okay, fine, so I might be a little biased when I say I never felt the need to grind in this game. Perhaps it's because the encounter rate is higher than normal, and it was almost impossible to run away from battle. But I never wanted to run away from random battles in the first place because of the chance to level up a certain stat. Is it grinding if it's fun? In a technical sense, yeah, I was grinding because I was putting extra effort into leveling up my party, an effort absent in many RPGs, hence why it's called a grind. The game's high encounter rate makes it almost impossible not to grind, so this might be why I never needed to spend any extra effort into it outside of the story. Pressing A isn't hard, and doing it over and over again will get boring and stale, and I'm willing to bet that the majority of us have experienced this. When I play Final Fantasy II, I feel like I'm refining my character, growing them in certain areas to excel in. The reason I grow one area and not another is because then it would be a grind, doing way more than is necessary. I liken the focus I had to give to Final Fantasy 2, like the focus I have to give to games like Mario and Luigi. Mashing A while watching TV does not work. You will die. You need to focus on the game at all times or else you won't progress. Or even like Undertale. You can't not pay attention to it. In Final Fantasy 2, you might not die, but by taking your focus away from the game, you're leveling things you don't need to. And as a result, it'll take a much longer time to improve your team and customize them to your liking. With this in mind, you might die of boredom. I don't know. It's probably more appropriate to relate it to Final Fantasy Tactics or Fire Emblem, games you have to tactically move certain characters to certain tiles and enemies in order to be successful. Granted, I don't think the leveling system is super complex, but at least you need to pay attention. I had fun leveling up my party to my liking, my choosing. Unlike other RPGs where you can just read a book or watch TV while continually mashing the A button in order to grind. Final Fantasy II always required my attention. Yes, you can do what I just mentioned with the game, constantly mash A while battling, but why would you want to? If I were to just sit there and spam A, then everyone would be a fighter. There would be no diversity and honestly would just make the game harder. And to get it out of the way, there were a lot of battles where I'd make everyone just attack. Because using cure on someone who has full HP or mindlessly casting a spell you know won't matter in the end isn't fun. Even then I would pay attention because I know there's at least something that needs leveling up that I can use in later battles. Like low level black magic spells I require late in the game on encounters where I'm confident that the others can fight by themselves. Those battles do take a little longer, but I know that my actions are going towards something. Plus, it's just more reason to level up white magic spells from the extra damage we take since the battles last longer in those situations. I know some of you would consider casting a level 1 black magic spell that does like 2 damage to a mid game monster to be inconsistent of what I said about using spells that aren't needed and won't matter. At least it's doing damage, and using it makes it stronger and but I, I, I mean, okay, it's grinding, it's an RPG, okay? Every RPG does something like this. You aren't freaking strong enough to fight that one boss? Better walk around in circles for an hour to get stronger. At least in Final Fantasy 2 I felt like I had control over the situation. I was consciously using certain spells and switching around and trying out new equipment. Stats going up in this game happens frequently. More often than not, it will only be a few stats, but it's not uncommon for a lot of stats to go up at once as well. It feels good to see so many things increase after a battle. Look how many things are getting stronger. I know that you could argue that this is basically the equivalent of one level up in another game, and you know what? It probably is. But at least I feel like I had a say into what stats are going up. I specifically wanted this thing to level up, and it did. For me, that's way more rewarding than seeing the number 28 going up to the number 29 with a bunch of other numbers going up behind the scenes. Grinding in other RPGs is so boring because the game is halted until you finally get that level up, which is the only sign of progress you'll see in that situation, usually happening in 10 to 15 minute intervals. Like, holy crap, finally, took you long enough. That's what grinding is. 
Battling and level up should excite a player when they're focused on other things like story or side quests. When they're stuck because of a boss or a dungeon, the game stops being fun because nothing happens until you level up. But, to reiterate what I said a minute ago, in Final Fantasy II, stat increases happen frequently. Like, look at this! Sword level, shield level, blizzard, HP, stamina, protect, MP, and on and on and on. There are so many things that are increasing all at once. But okay, at the end of the day, it's grinding. Every RPG has it. If you want to mash A and you think it's super fun, then that's fine. But you'd be missing the entire point. If you want a party full of beefcakes, then go ahead. But the game encourages you not to do that by giving you various party members in the fourth slot throughout the game. It gives you a character that knows white magic, characters that only use their fists to show you that that's actually a viable option, a dual wielding pirate, and so on. These characters demonstrate other options that you can do in the game. Anyway, moving on. I mentioned before that battles will take longer from trying to level up weaker spells late into the game. The game actually rewards you for longer battles. I noticed that not only in boss battles, but long, difficult enemy encounters resulted in a boatload of stat increases. This is obviously because you do a lot more during a long battle than a shorter one. You could say that this is overkill since battles happen so frequently anyway. Why would you want battles to last longer than they already are? I don't know. Ask the people who attack themselves endlessly in front of weaker enemies. But in all seriousness, during a dungeon when you're already running into a bunch of random encounters, dealing with a tougher than normal enemy can get annoying. I know I was at multiple points. This and the long, maze-like dungeons in the game can all be too much to handle at once, spending an hour or more in any dungeon in the game unless you have a walkthrough. These are both individual problems I'd like to tackle at once. Dungeon designs… Yeah, okay, they can get repetitive. I can completely understand why people wouldn't like them at all. With its, again, maze-like structure, a lot of paths lead to nowhere, most not even leading to any sort of reward for unintentionally branching off the path. A lot, and I mean a lot, of doors lead to empty rooms with an even higher encounter rate. All these things, on top of the already higher than normal encounter rate, can make entering a new dungeon seem very daunting. Personally, I think it works with how the game is generally focused around battles so much. It's kind of the core of the game. This is why people who don't like the leveling system just straight up don't like the game. Its key mechanics revolve around battling and leveling up. It wants you to customize your character in whatever way you want. RPGs are almost expected to have this grand story that takes up a good chunk of the game to balance out the gameplay. But this game was made in 1988. Games at this time barely featured any kind of story. The gameplay was always the main focus. Final Fantasy II did have a story that was great for its time, but it's still a 30 year old game, so its core gameplay mechanics remain the main focus. This is a game about battling and leveling up your characters to your desire. The leveling system may be divisive, and it's definitely not perfect, but the final product is what we got. A now retro game that was much more gameplay focused. Battling in Final Fantasy 2, or the original or any Final Fantasy game at the time, could be compared to platforming in Mario, or puzzle solving in Myst. Battling and leveling up was the game. It was its own genre. Back when the game was first released, it was met with general positive reception. Famitsu gave it a 35 out of 40, standing with the likes of Super Mario Bros. 3, which also got a 35 out of 40, and Dragon Quest 3, which got a 38 out of 40, all released in the same year. Just as some people would enjoy games like Super Mario Bros. for its precise platforming, games like Final Fantasy 2 were much more methodical and slower paced, which some people prefer. It can be more relaxing than having to make that super difficult jump in Mario. Final Fantasy 2 may not have aged well compared to those other two games, but the core of the game is what they had to design around. It was different than the first Final Fantasy and other RPGs, and it wasn't perfect, but it was unique. And the game they built had to be centered around battles. So the dungeons can get annoying, but it was for the sake of the design of the game. But the remake should have fixed these problems to begin with. First of all, they did fix most of these problems. The NES version, even though generally positively received at the time, and can still be enjoyed by some, was incredibly broken. The Game Boy Advance version onwards fixed these problems and even adjusted the difficulty to make it an experience that's more accessible, although I guess we know the results of what people thought about that. There were times where battles became tedious because of the off-the-walls encounter rate. But hey, at least every magic spell has the option to target every monster or ally. Magic gets you through certain battles in no time, and you're leveling it up at the same time. But since this game has you leveling up things by doing them, I'll just run out of MP since I have to use magic all the time. If I'm in a long dungeon, I won't have any MP when I have to face the
the boss. Well, yeah, you have to be tactical in what you do in the game. It is an RPG after all. If you're in a dungeon, you're going to be fighting a lot of battles. It's expected. I mean, you can mash your way through the dungeon if you hate yourself, or you could play it like any other RPG and be resourceful. But I'll run out of ethers more quickly, and they're really expensive to begin with. I don't know about anyone else, but I never had any issues with money in the game. Mid-adventure, I had enough money to buy 99 cottages and then some. I had enough money to buy plenty of ethers and potions to get me through the next dungeon. You're supposed to play this game differently than other RPGs. I know that I'm guilty of saving ethers throughout an RPG just in case I need them sometime in the future, only for me to never use them by the time I finish the game. You can buy them in Final Fantasy 2, but they are expensive as one can imagine. But the game is very generous with its money, especially towards the end where it's practically needed in order to survive the last dungeon. But even ignoring the end of the game, I never had any issues with managing my MP even when I had enough money only to buy a few ethers. I always had enough to get me by. I know there's kind of a set in stone way to playing RPGs, especially older ones, but each game is its own experience. It's easy to play every RPG similarly, almost like every new one that comes out is solely there for a new story with the same old battle system everyone is used to, but each game does have its own set of rules. If you're really good at Super Mario World to the point where you can play the game with your eyes closed, does that mean you're equally as good at other Mario games? No, even though they all are Mario games and control similarly, it doesn't mean each game plays the same. It would take time to get used to something like Super Mario Bros. 3 if it's your first time playing it, even if you've played Super Mario World your entire life. Likewise, Final Fantasy 2 should be treated and played differently than other games of the same genre. Okay, but back to battles, no I am not done talking about this. There are other reasons people don't like the leveling system. Even though spells like Fire and Blizzard can be naturally leveled up throughout the course of the game because they are actually useful, some spells just aren't convenient during regular battles and therefore will never be useful unless you go out of your way to use them. For example, there won't be many opportunities to cast the life spell, so unless you spam it on allies who aren't even dead, it won't be very effective late game. I can definitely see how people would have a problem with this. Casting a spell like Blink or Stun can feel unfulfilling if you're casting it on a single enemy that will probably die on the same turn. Even spells like Poison, which you get much later in the game, needs to be used a bunch in order for it to catch up with your other spells. And you know casting it on bosses at level 1 won't work. It barely works on normal enemies at that level. Spells like this can be difficult to level up, especially if you need to go out of your way to cast it. But this isn't the only Final Fantasy game that does this. In Final Fantasy 3, 5, and even the Bravely Default games, you don't get every job immediately. They're spread out throughout the course of the game. When you get them, they start out essentially at level 1. You do get the luxury of having another job system on top of it, as well as leveling it up simply by just having it. But like in these games, just because you get these spells at level 1 halfway through the game does not make them useless. That's not to say that it's not void of criticism in Final Fantasy 2, however. Obviously, if you have spells that are just plain old better to use, you'll opt for those spells. I can get people being annoyed by seeing a spell that they might want to use starting out at level 1. Personally, I saw random encounters as a good opportunity to use these newer spells. They don't do much damage, but I have three other party members that can handle their own in battle, so my magic users had the ability to focus on leveling other spells. I like to think of it as an investment. These spells I get halfway through the game are weak now, but they have a lot of potential to be very useful, but I can understand why it's a bother to some people. The most common argument against this I hear is that since you already have a few powerful, leveled up magic spells, getting a new one that starts at level 1 is useless. A lot of reviews go on to criticize that if you want to level up every magic spell, it will take thousands of casts and dozens of hours to do it. I mean, yes, that is true. But I don't think the developers were expecting you to level up every single spell in the game. I gave a few spells to characters that I know I would actually use and be useful now and later on. So in my playthrough I never used spells like Blink or Stun, but that doesn't mean that other people won't use them. Someone could very well use these spells normally throughout the game, even on tougher enemies and bosses. It's an effective strategy and if they're comfortable using them, then more power to them. This is once again the mentality that since I won't be using every spell in the 
the game, the rest are useless, and therefore they shouldn't have even been put in the game. This, yet again, goes back to having more options in the game. People are treating like having more options in a game about customization and decisions and making choices is a bad thing. Just because you think you shouldn't use other spells does not mean they're useless. In a game like Skyrim when you're picking your race, do you think to yourself that the other classes are useless because you're not using them? What about job systems and other Final Fantasy games? Does not using the other jobs make them useless? In your playthrough of the game, yes, that might be the case. But that's not what we end up thinking about these additional options we have. Most people reviewing these games would point it out as a positive, so why not Final Fantasy 2? We have all these different spells and weapons to choose from, isn't that just so cool? I personally don't like this or that spell, but this spell is my jam. I didn't feel the need to use every single spell that the game had to offer, especially since some of them come later in the game when you already have leveled up magic spells, which, to be fair, is kind of bothersome. I used the spells that I thought would be useful, and sometimes this does mean trying some out to see if I would actually use them or not. Even though the large majority of people may just pick spells like Fire, Blizzard, and Thunder, doesn't mean these other options shouldn't be available because there may be a group of people that do use those spells and like using them even if it's just 1% of the people that play this game. This is like saying that a certain character in a fighting game should be removed because no one plays as them. Imagine how much backlash that would get, not only from the people that use that character, but like, everyone. Shenko from Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was bottom tier and barely anyone used her, but that barely anyone population exists. I happen to use Shenko throughout my hundreds of hours poured into Marvel 3. I never dropped her from the day I unlocked her. I thought she was just so cool. So imagine my shock and horror if they actually did announce, hey everyone, Shenko is only used by 0.01% of the people who play online according to our data, so we're just going to remove her. Now imagine that scenario with Final Fantasy 2. If it was released in modern times and there was a patch that got rid of magic spells like Sap and Tiny, do you think that there would be any sort of reaction? To be fair though, some spells should be balanced better. Like having some spells that are stronger at level 1 if you get them halfway through the game. That's something I'd welcome in a theoretical patch. Especially with spells like Ultima. Imagine how cool it would be to have a level 1 Ultima spell do like 4 or 500 damage. Heck yeah I want to level up this spell. Alas, it is not so. People also complain that the weapons are unbalanced and that some choices should obviously be made above others. Not every weapon is created equally, that's true. Why go for something like a rod when a sword does more damage? So if you went with leveling anything else, you're probably going to be at a disadvantage. And to this I say, yeah, you're right. I mean, I could argue that it's not that big of a deal, and for the record, I don't really think that it is, but some poor soul could be put in a situation where they're stuck with a weapon class that isn't really the best, only to find out by the end of the game that it's too late, unless they want to grind another weapon. Who knows, maybe rods help encourage using magic more often. Too much of a stretch? You get a healing rod in the game, which you can use to ACTUALLY LEGITIMATELY attack your party members with to heal them. But other than that, yeah, I can see why people would have a problem with this. Okay. I think that covers everything except for the story, but I won't go into detail with that because I don't think it affects a person's enjoyment for the game as much as the gameplay does. Look, I can see why people don't like this game. I can. Even with all the nice things I've said about it, I do think the game has obvious flaws. I'm not saying the game is perfect, but I decided not to talk about them in very much detail and go more towards the angle of arguing against those points. There are a lot of good reviews out there for Final Fantasy II that go into more detail about the game's faults, and all the videos I used in this video are in the description. It's not like people who don't like this game don't have good, logical reasons for not liking it because they definitely do, but in my experience, you can have just as logical arguments from the opposite of viewpoints for the same examples. I'm not saying that you should or need to like this game. With how many people disliking it, you can probably assume that the majority of people who haven't played it won't enjoy it as well. The mechanics in this game are divisive, and people wouldn't just bash it for simple reasons like it being too different. But sometimes I can't help but feel that influential people who review games are affecting our overall enjoyment. If we see something that has a bad score, we're less likely to buy it. If we do manage to play it though, it would only take one annoyance for us to start confirming the negative reviews. If you were to take a generally well-received game, let's say Spyro, and get a group of people to watch a well-written review of someone who didn't like the game, would it affect those people's experience with a game that got mostly positive reviews? 
I'm only bringing this up because I know it's happened with me with anime in the past. A reviewer I liked would write a negative review on a certain show, and I couldn't help but feel that I needed to have the same viewpoint if I wanted to be seen as intelligent. I believe that most people, when they like or dislike something, have good reason for having that opinion. Whether it be personal taste, logical reasoning, or both, I feel that most people have a good reason for disliking something, like Final Fantasy 2. I'm not super into the, my faith in humanity is lost stuff. What I'm saying is, if you dislike the game, then you're not wrong for disliking it. But the same is true for people who do like this game. If you look at other negative reviews for Final Fantasy 2 and compare them to positive reviews, they both talk about the same examples and say similar things about them. They bring up the same scenarios and examples, but they use them to support their respective arguments even though their opinions are opposite. They explain how it is and what it implicates, but one side goes into why it's bad and the other goes into why it's good. Two valid viewpoints. So, for those of you who haven't played Final Fantasy 2, should you try it out? Even though I and a few others like this game, you should take into consideration that a lot of people don't like it. I know it seems like I talked about it like it's a great game that everyone should play, but what I'm trying to argue in this video is that it has more strengths than it does weaknesses. Base your decision on if you want to play it off of gameplay and how the reviewer describes the game. Try not to let a number at the end of a video decide whether you buy it or not. There have been far too many times where I'd buy a game that was reviewed well that I'd play for maybe an hour and never got back to. Even when I'd try to get my money's worth and force myself to play, I often realize 10 hours in that I'm just not having fun with it. Remember when God Sound came out and IGN gave it a 3 out of 10, even though general consensus is that it's a good game? Remember how Jim Sterling gave Breath of the Wild a 7 out of 10 and how he got backlash for not thinking that it's perfect? If anything, you should try and see a variety of opinions about something you want to buy. It gives you a better idea of the game's perceived strengths and weaknesses. Reviews are supposed to be read to let you have a good idea if you'd like it or not. If a reviewer says something like, this game has this certain thing in it, and your immediate reaction is, oh, I like that kind of thing. Thing. Would it matter if the reviewer started to explain why that certain thing is bad or not? Final Fantasy 2 is not a perfect game, and for a lot of people it wasn't exactly the best experience. There are plenty of times where I got frustrated, but at the end of the day I had a lot of fun with it. As I said at the beginning, there aren't a lot of games that can grab my attention anymore, but Final Fantasy 2 did just that and it didn't let go. I beat it in two days. That never happens. So yes, this game is special to me. And as for Soul of Rebirth, I don't know, I didn't play it.